Hey everybody, how's it going? Kevin Freebie here, and today we're going to be talking about the Starlifter preamp and DI by Nordstrand Audio. Okay, a little bit about this pedal. I absolutely love it. You might be able to tell by the fact that I have two. I'm actually plugged in through this one, and this is the one that goes with me to all my gigs. It's on my pedal board. I absolutely love it. I always try to run it to the house. Um, to be honest, it's made me a little lazy from taking an amp. Um, just so you know, the way that this kind of all came about was I was looking for a really good DI. What was going on is I was playing a lot more gigs with in-ear monitors. And if you've ever done a gig with in-ear monitors, you know how rough it can be probably. Um, you know, you go spend all this time and you spend all this money and whatever to kind of go in and create sort of a, you know, this perfect tone. You buy the amp of your dreams, you buy the bass of your dreams, you know, you have fresh strings, everything's going to sound magical. And then all of a sudden you plug in to the back of your amp. And even with a good DI, you put some in-ears in and sometimes it's just not the same. Well, some of the gigs I was doing, I wouldn't even be able to bring my amp to. Literally, um, some of the places were in-ears only, no amplification. That way the sound man ha could have complete control over it. So I knew it was time to start investing in gear. Um, obviously, I have a recording set up here at my house, so I also wanted to get something for that as well. So I kind of um, started down the rabbit hole and um, I've done a lot of recording sessions and got to use a lot of different DI boxes because if you've done this at all, you'll know that most of us bass players um, usually go amp and DI, sometimes just DI if the DI is good enough. What I found is I had two of my favorite DI's. One is a Noble and one is a uh, Red DI or some people call it Ready by A Designs. They're both absolutely phenomenal preamps. So this year, or this past year, I should say, even though it was this year, um, 2019 NAMM show. I went to the NAMM show with a purpose this time. Usually it's going to hang out with friends, see people you haven't seen in a while. This time I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna drop a ton of money on a really good DI, okay? And I went there prepared. My budget, to be honest, was about a grand. Um, and I was more than happy to drop that on a Noble or a Red DI. Um, while I was there, I ran into a really good friend of mine, uh, Kerry Nordstrand. You might know him from Nordstrand Audio. He makes Nordstrand Electronics. A lot of people know him from that because he's gotten so popular with his pickups. They're phenomenal. Anyways, he's an awesome bass builder, obviously amazing with pickups. And while I was talking to him, he showed me this. Okay. Um, we pulled one of his basses um, off a rack at NAMM and he said, plug it in. Now I plugged it in and it sounded great, but to be honest, at NAMM, everything sounds really good and really bad all at the same time. It's really just hard to hear yourself, especially if you're not using headphones or anything like that. Um, we got to talking and I told him that I had pretty much a week long session the week after NAMM. It was for a recording artist and we were gonna be locked up in a session for three to five days depending on how tracking went. He says, I'll tell you what, Go ahead and take this with you and use it in the studio and let me know how it sounds. If you like it, um, we'll go from there. Needless to say, I have a second one over there, so it went really well, okay? Um, this isn't really gonna be the standard type of demo where I talk about what frequencies the bass knob's at or what frequencies the mid or treble is at. Um, in fact, Kerry has also said that himself. He says that he prefers you just to use the knobs and to find the sound that sounds good. When it comes to these sort of devices or amplification in general, I'm kind of lazy. I want something that I can plug into and it just sounds good right away. I don't want to sit there and have to fiddle with knobs. If I have to fiddle with knobs, I'm out. Um, I just want to be real. <laughs> That's just the truth. Um, so I plugged into this thing and of course going through in-ears, typically the first thing that you lose is bass. So I pretty much plugged into this, went like this. Um, the very first track that we were doing at the studio was 
um, kind of a throwback style track. And so I took this button right here. I call this my cheat button, by the way, because I'll, I'll explain that in a second. Flipped it to the vintage position. This was my EQ. Now we had a really good preamp that was already there. I'm not gonna mention any names, but I can tell you that it was really awesome. Also, the studio that I was at was known for kind of having really high-end analog gear. So it was a little bit of a hard sell to plug this in at first. We did one take with the original DI box, and then we did the second take with this. And right away, they said, keep it. We're gonna go through that for the whole album. And that's exactly what we did, okay? So literally, uh, one little turn of this knob and one little flip of that switch, this is exact, these are my go-to settings, okay? Um, I mentioned that this is what I call a cheat switch. Okay, so it, if you check it out, and uh, what I'll do is later in the video, we'll zoom in on the one that I'm actually recording through, and I'm gonna go ahead and go through the settings. But what this is, is this is just a filter. Now, if I set it to center, it's the filter's enabled and it's just this button. However, if I go up, it gives me a bit more vintage tone. If I go down, it gives me a more modern tone. So I'm gonna go ahead and play a couple grooves. Oh, real quick, before I play a couple grooves, um, I wanna mention the gear that I'm running through into the DI because I think that that's super important. Okay, I'm skipping the amp on this one. I'm going straight from my bass into the DI, but I wanna explain what's going on with the bass. So right here, we have a F bass VFPJ5. So it basically stands for Vintage F PJ for the pickups, okay? I'm gonna get into a, this bass in depth on a whole nother video. Um, but I do want to at least tell you what's going on here, okay? The body is alder and with an ash center block maple fingerboard, okay? These are Aguilar pickups, and this is the f base standard preamp. I'm using Dunlop strings, and they're the nickel, and they're the Dunlop super bright strings. And it's 45, 65, 85, 105, 130 on the low B. Then I'm running from the bass into the Nordstrand preamp. And from the Nordstrand preamp, I'm going direct into a Universal Audio Apollo X4. And then that's going right into Pro Tools. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy down. I'm gonna play a couple examples. I'll play um, probably a finger style example. Um, you know, something that's a, a fairly standard groove so it gives you an idea of how it might sound um, in a normal context and then I'll probably do a slap groove as well I'll let it loop and then I'm gonna go ahead and reamp it and I'll get a close-up of the pedal as I'm doing that okay so real quick um, here we are with a close-up of the star lifter the knob layout is pretty bare bones and very simple and I love that like I said earlier I don't want to work too hard for my sound I want to make sure the way I play and what I have dialed in on my bass comes through what I'm playing now, that being said, I do like something that adds some color. I know a lot of people out there that say, oh, well, this is super, super transparent. Well, if I was using something that was super transparent, um, there would be no point in having it. Remember, I'm using this to actually enhance my sound. Okay, that's a little bit of a rant. I might delete that out later. Anyway, so right here we have the front of the star lifter. One of the cool features about it is the lights right here. What you'll see is if I engage the lights, right now this is off, okay? If I engage it, those lights turn on nice bright green. You really can't miss it. Now if you wanna mute it, they turn red. Go from, now if I'm gonna go ahead and unmute, goes back to green. If I wanna shut it down, there, now it's off. Okay, um, I have the second one here, and I'm gonna bring that into the frame just a little bit, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it over, and I'm gonna show you the rear. Okay, uh, pardon the Velcro, but this is the one that goes on my pedal board. 
okay? So as you can see, for all of you super tech heads, it kind of has the pad, the EQ, the ground, and another pad and impedance for the in, and then that's for the out. I have some stills that I'll probably post as well. You have your section out and you have your section in. As you can see, each one of these has the markings there. Um, it's self-explanatory, so I'm not going to talk you through numbers that are kind of already right there in front of you. I will go ahead and move this now, and I'll get started with the reamping. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Thank you.